Welcome to Cleffy Land's Global Cooking Challenge. Tonight is night one of country number 154 on the Global Cooking Challenge. Tonight we are cooking the food of Sierra Leone. Uh, and tonight we will be cooking a corned beef and yam cakes from Sierra Leone. And uh, just to show you, Sierra Leone is going to be over here in the western side of Africa. Uh, right there. I don't know if I'm pointing at that. No, I'm looking through the camera. Right there is where it is located. Uh, so uh, we're going to get working on our corned beef and yam cakes. Uh, hello, thank you for the restream, Kathy. Uh, I mean, I am very sweaty, so. Yeah, there we are. Just came back. Welcome to the land of humidity. Uh, we are in Florida and I just ran ah like about six miles in this insane heat and we're listening to music well first a couple songs with Sierra Leone in the title then we'll be listening to actual official music from Sierra Leone um, hi Kathy how you doing it is very 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 warm here uh, I, I I look like the king of, of, of moisture here right now so uh, here gonna prop ourselves up here. In fact, we're going so slow here because of the heat that I haven't even sharpened my knives yet. Uh, so let me get myself some water. I, mean, I literally just got out of the shower and put myself together here. So if you'll forgive me. Okay. Whew. So. Oh my god. Yam cakes. So, look, um, if you are uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Uh, if you are following the alphabet, <clears throat> I know your countries. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You will know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That uh, at this point we have cooked most of the countries in the neighborhood, and Africa, of course, has more countries in it than any other continent. And there are a lot of countries bunched up together in West Africa, <clears throat> which means that we have already cooked uh, most of the foods of the neighboring countries already. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Which means each time we get another one, it's a bigger challenge to try to find something I have not done already. Uh, because so many of the dishes they have in common. We've done all manner of peanut soups and chicken and rice dishes and beef stews galore. <clears throat> so uh, it gets trickier and trickier each time. This time we found us uh, one thing we haven't done before, <clears throat> which is uh, a little unique to uh, Sierra Leone. So that's what we're going to do. Guess what just happened here on Meerkat? What did just happen here on Meerkat? Now I need to know. Inquiring minds. Uh, I'm going to put that in water. Uh, Now the cat has officially gotten scared. So what happened? What happened? What happened? Uh, uh, I this is uh, Ty Lopez off because of what I was asking. Pissed. Oh well, that's a shame. Um, so anyway, here we are peeling a. I'm gonna put this in water. Um, peeling a. Now sweet potatoes and yams <clears throat> are not the same thing. Once upon a time, uh, the uh, West Africans would tend to, he tried to call me a bitch and I thought I wasn't, and I thought I wasn't gonna anything. Uh, every rapper, hey, thank you for liking the restream. Um, sorry that happened to you, Austin. That sounds like a really shitty experience. Uh, it's been that kind of a day. 
So sorry that happened. Boo. He's a jerk. Uh, I, I don't even know who that is, so I'm, I'm glad I don't. Um, so, uh, in any case, yam, sweet potatoes, not the same thing. Africans uh, would uh, be eating uh, yams, which is a large white tuber, uh, root vegetable. Uh, but um, when, um, and, and they would eat sweet potatoes too, what we call sweet potatoes. Uh, but uh, when uh, some industrialist of some sort decided, hey, listen, it was cheap to feed slaves um, sweet potatoes, uh, they just said, hey, listen, you know, these are yams. Yams they were familiar with. They said, fine, we'll eat them. They're yams. So somehow the word yam became a synonym in the U.S. for sweet potatoes when they're not. Um, in any case, we're cooking sweet potatoes. Uh, just asking him questions and calling someone out for having fake followers. Dude's a scammer. Gotta put the pawn shop, gotta run to the pawn shop real quick. Uh, okay, well, good luck with that. Sorry, sorry you had a really crappy experience. Uh, that really, really, really stinks. Life on social media can be total bear sometimes. Ah, uh, what happened? I had my music going. Boo, I'll come back if you're still, oh, I'm definitely gonna still be here. Uh, yes, this will be going until about 7.30. Uh, or 745. Uh, come on, baby, you can do it. Why do you not play? How about if we make you go to the next song? How about that? A. Uh, we've got Universal African Drum Dance Collective. Can we, can we do that for me, please? I should be hearing something, but I'm not hearing anything. I'm hearing nothing. I'm hearing nothing. They all heard something. Next song, nothing. Okay, there we go. We got something now. Okay. The magic of the iPad and AirPlay. <clears throat> so, uh, yams and uh, corned beef. Now, um, oddly, one of the things uh, you tend to find corned beef in, you know, the usual places, but also in the Pacific, oddly enough, with a lot of sweet potatoes. Um, in Sierra Leone, uh, the corned beef isn't uh, eaten just because it's the only thing available that's imported like it is in the Pacific Islands, but rather, you know, just because. Uh, in this case, uh, rather than do canned corned beef, we got fresh corned beef uh, because, you know, it seemed like a better idea. And uh, we have that possibility, and um, the person who I saw did this recipe suggested it, and it sounded like a good idea. So, uh, but first we need to uh, cut up our sweet potato here. Uh, so, how are we getting to a flat surface here? Uh, half. You know, I should be using the meat cleaver, but Kenneth was here. He'd be saying, why aren't you using the meat cleaver? And that's not good. Let me wash that off. Okay. Meanwhile. Oh, what a day. Uh, I've been freaking out over the weather. Here it's too hot, and where I'm going, there's a hurricane. So, I'm real excited about that. Uh, I do not normally cook on a Thursday. Normally I would be cooking on a Friday. But uh, there's a good chance I may not be here on Friday. I may be flying right into a hurricane. So, uh... Considering, I figured it was best to cook today because uh, I, in all likelihood, would not be able to cook on Monday, uh, which leaves only um, Tuesday for the second night of Sierra Leone. There'll only be two nights. Um, but this is, uh, we've used fresh corned beef and yams uh, or, or sweet potatoes. Now I'm doing it. Um, so we're gonna boil these. Um, first I'm gonna stick them in some water. But we're going to boil these uh, sweet potatoes first. Uh, and while we do that, we're going to prep the rest of this, uh, which is going to involve uh, dicing the corned beef, and then we're going to fry up some patties. And if there's time, we'll make um, a salad and have to remember to make some rice. Uh, this is actually, uh, I gather, a pretty fast cook, which is why I'm starting at 6. Lately, I've been starting as early as 5. Um... But uh, I had to decide on my dish 
and do my shopping and take care of my life uh, all uh, in one day today. So uh, that's kind of long and short of that. I couldn't even uh, schedule the stream a day ahead of time because I wasn't even sure you know, if I'd be busy packing or not or what. So it's so exciting. So uh, I mean, I can get into more about Sierra Leone when, once more people get here. So I'm not just like talking to myself. Uh, and the uh, the two people who would watch uh, at some point in the future, not live, but Memorex. So uh, we're going to boil these in some water and, uh, and that should take about 20 minutes to soften. Uh, so let me get my pot going. Here we got our sweet potatoes. This is a kind of low key kind of day. Wasn't even really expecting to be doing this. Uh, hi, I'm still here. I'll be with you in a moment. I will move you over here. Ak -ak -ak -ak. I will move you over here to the suite. Who we got here? Is that, uh, hello, Norman? Hello, Norman, how you doing? Thanks for coming by. Okay, I must remember to salt the water. It seems to be an ongoing issue with moi with forgetting to salt the water. So boil the water and then uh, boil our uh, sweet potatoes. And that should be about 20 minutes, uh, supposedly, to get them soft. And while it does that, uh, I will uh, get to prepping the rest and so that it does not bubble over as I know it shall, the uh, magic spoon trick, uh, because hopefully I'll be able to see it in, uh, in the camera as I look out the back here. <clears throat> if you see anything bubbling, just yell. Just, you know, throw your arms up, go, hey, Clippy, it's boiling. Save yourself before the house burns down. Okay, uh, onion. So, get our bowls and the delightful onion. Okay. Where else can you watch people chop an onion on the internet? Mm. Where else would you? Where else would you want to? So, uh, Sierra Leone. I, 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 story time when I chop onions. It's just kind of how it works. Uh, Sierra Leone, again located in West Africa, um, has only had people there, uh, any people there, for the past uh, uh, 2,500 years which, uh, uh, insofar as Africa goes, is not a very long time. Uh, people uh, migrated in from other parts of Africa, and the uh, geography and topography changed over time, uh, from savannas to rainforests and back, uh, and deserts. And uh, some people uh, did manage to kind of live there uh, at the same time that the Mali Empire uh, which was kind of one of the largest empires in the world, uh, an African empire, uh, was expanding, but uh, they managed to resist the Mali Empire because uh, the rainforest was rather inhospitable, filled with tsetse flies, which uh, had a nasty habit of killing off cattle and, uh, and um, zebras. I think it's zebras. Uh, zebus? Livestock. Um, and zebra, I know, are not livestock. I know that. Um, and, uh, but, uh, that kind of held people off for a while. Uh, eventually, uh, various tribes lived mostly in the north. Uh, the uh, Portuguese explorers came by, noticed the place, and then, you know, French and British and, uh, Dutch uh, traders started setting up camp. 
uh, mostly trading slaves that were brought in from the interior of Africa uh, to be traded. Eventually, the British sort of established the, uh, the sort of the uh, triangle of trade that you probably heard in school, slaves and molasses and rum. Uh, so slaves would go from Sierra Leone off to uh, like the Dominican Republic, the Caribbean and such. And, uh, and then you get molasses and rum working their way back uh, to the uh, uh, England and then back to Africa and such. So um, the, uh, eventually the British decided they, uh, they were kind of in control, but um, about this time the American Revolution happened. And uh, the Americans had slaves, and the slaves weren't too keen uh, on being, you know, slaves to, you know, new American people. So they decided, to th many decided to throw their lot in with the British and fight on the side of the British. And the British had kind of offered them protection if they fought on, uh, on the side of the British. Uh, well, we know how that war ended. The British did not win. Uh, so the British, uh, staying true to their word, uh, took a whole bunch of um, freed slaves uh, and decided to repopulate, to put them in different places where they could be free. Uh, some went to Canada, um, some went uh, to parts of the Caribbean, uh, and uh, some went to, uh, a good number went to Africa and into a cove uh, in Africa. And... Um, they uh, weren't really used to the area and illnesses and such, and most of them didn't survive. Uh, so of about, about 700, maybe like 60 some odd survived. Um, a few years later, some of the Af uh, freed slaves that had been sent to Nova Scotia um, weren't doing too well in Nova Scotia. Uh, they weren't too thrilled with uh, being there. And so some of them took the offer to, you know, go to be repopulated in Africa. Now, most of these slaves had come either for a few generations deep uh, as being slaves in the U.S., or they um, were from various parts of Africa, um, but they, you know, decided to get uh, settled back in the cove of what is called the capital of Freetown, hence the name, Freetown. Um, so... Uh, they got settled there, uh, and uh, again, from a variety of different places, different languages and such. So uh, English is sort of like an official language, but most people speak a, uh, a Creole, a mix of variety of languages, um, which is uh, pronounced sort of like Creole, but it's spelled a little differently. Uh, and um, just like in Liberia, when uh, American slaves went and settled in Liberia, uh, by the Americans, uh, the uh, ones that were settled in Sierra Leone by the British uh, had a little bit of conflict with the native Africans that were already living there. Um, in Liberia, that's continued to be, you know, an, uh, an ethnic issue uh, until, you know, perhaps to this day, but at least until quite recently, that was Liberia. Uh, Sierra Leone had a horrible civil war that lasted 11 years from 1991 to 2002, which was mega, mega tragic. Horrible, tra terrible, 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 any kind of... And then now with Ebola more recently, um, uh, progress that they've made since the Civil War is uh, kind of, you know, going backwards too, which is a very, very sad. Um, also known for the diamond trade, which has uh, been immortalized in music and song, from everyone from Kanye West to uh, the movies like Blood Diamond and such. Um, there's also um, a book which the name is escaping me. I read it. It was very, 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 very sad about child soldiers in uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, tragic story. Uh, I forgot what the name is because it's been a few years since I read it. But, um, you know, just about this child who was sort of abducted and became a child soldier and, you know, brutally killed tons of people before he was sort of rescued and rehabilitated and moved to the States and now he's an author. Um, so, uh, it's a, 
interesting yet uh, sad place with uh, a degree of hope. So that is Sierra Leone um, in in my little nutshell. From 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 what little I know. Anyone who cares to to be give a more comp comprehensive view is welcome to to add their their point of view and their two cents. So. Uh, chopped onion. As you always get stories with stories with chopped onions. This is kind of how my brain works. So uh, once we got that, uh, we're gonna chop up our parsley, which is gonna be our dressing. Well, actually, not our dressing. It's actually gonna go into the um, cake that we're making. But let me clean this all off. Uh, be right back. It's not fun doing really sad countries. Even the food is good. Uh, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I do really love uh, West African food. I mean, African food in general, as varied as it is. Uh, West African food um, in particular. Um, there are, of course, varieties from, you know, any, any village in any part of the world, any other village. Uh, but uh, largely speaking, from what I've seen, uh, most of Sub-Saharan West Africa has, you know, so much in common, it's kind of hard to tell the dishes apart. Um, sometimes it's just a, a slight variation in a method that something is done. Um, so this is the first time I found those, uh, these yam cakes. Um, I'm still trying to decide what to do on Tuesday. Um, there's a stew, a meat stew with a puree, with sort of like a vegetable puree, which I'm considering. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, I am so thirsty, I'm sorry. So, how's your day going? Crazy chick. Heidi, hi. Oh my god. Okay, so, water boiling. Starting to, anyway. Okay, let's see how good our parsley is. We don't need much, so I did not buy more. Oh my god. What is that spring onions? I'm debating whether to make um, like a, a totally random salad to go with this. Uh, for two reasons. One, I need a vegetable, and two, um, I've got stuff that I bought for the... Um, the quasi fiasco. I don't know if you watched um, uh, Tuesday. We were cooking Seychelles, which came out exceptionally well. Um, you can check that out on the blog at cliffyland.com. Uh, you can see pictures, links to the uh, uh, original recipes. Uh, this video, the video is right here. The uh, reviews of kind of how it went and information about the countries. But on last Tuesday. Uh, my goal was to make a, an, avocado, an octopus salad, which became a baby octopus salad, which became a green papaya salad, which when I went and opened up my green papaya, it turned out I was an idiot and I had actually purchased something different. I purchased a Florida avocado, which though wound up being making a pretty decent salad. Uh, Martina Highcliffe had just making Philly cheesesteak for dinner. It was delicious. Oh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Down, boy, down. Okay. That sounds tasty. I have not had a Philly cheesesteak in a long time. Probably when I went to Philadelphia, which is a long time ago. I went to I went to Philadelphia in search of Argentinian food, if you can believe that. Uh, I heard they had Argentinian beef there. I heard there was like one restaurant that had actual Argentinian beef. And when we got there, they said, no, we don't have that anymore. And I was bummed. But uh, Philly cheesesteak, yum. Ah, ah, everything gets on the floor. Okay, so I think this part just has some life in it. Uh, still bubbling. Let's chop up our parsley. So, Martina, how you doing? Good seeing you. You're always quite a great help. Uh, and a moral boost when I need one, like today. 
I am stressing, stressing about the heat here. I'm stressing about whether to get on a plane tomorrow or not. Because if I get on a plane, maybe I won't be able to get back. Or maybe I won't be able to land where I want to land because of this hurricane. Maybe I won't be able to get back because of a hurricane. Hur I mean, I don't know. Hurricanes and the things that uh, surround them, like power outages, or like the things, just about the things I hate the most in the world that I actually have to deal with on an occasional basis. Joe, thank you for the follow. Uh, and thank you for the restream. How you doing, buddy? We're chopping up parsley and listening to the Universal African Dance and Drum Ensemble as we cook the food of Sierra Leone. Ah, ah you know, I think there's garlic. Is there garlic here? No, there isn't garlic. Um, I said, you know, dig. Where's the hurricane? The hur oh, good night, nurse. The hurricane's in the Atlantic. It's, we're, you know, in, you know, Florida kind of bul bulges to the east. We're kind of where it bulges. So we are the closest spot to the Bahamas. Um, the Bahamas, of course, is massive. It's, you know, you really don't have an idea how big the Bahamas is. But the hurricane's in the southern Bahamas right now, working its way north. It won't hit us. But, uh, it could go and hit anywhere from South Carolina to New York, New Jersey. Um, and they're, or could just go back out to the sea. And they don't know, but it's, you know, getting quite strong. It is quite strong already. Um, yes, yes I do. I do have a trip planned tomorrow, uh, but I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. Um, cause, uh, I have this mortal fear of being stuck in an airport. Uh, um, uh, so, yes, that's, uh, I, everyone has travel stories, uh, I have my own, but, uh, since I lived in D.C. for, you know, many, many, many years, uh, many of them involve weather in D.C. Ironically, one of them involved weather in D.C. when we didn't even live there. We were in, this had to do with snow. We were in Puerto Rico, coming back from a cruise. The morning I got off the cruise ship in San Juan, and the idea was to take the plane from San Juan to DC and just get it, change planes and then go to Ohio, over there. And we were fine. The plane left a little late uh, from San Juan, but the guy said, we'll make it up in the air. We land in DC and the guy says, Oh, we're here early. We're here early, so it's guaranteed you're all gonna make your, your, your flight. So do not worry. You're all guaranteed you're all gonna make your flights. He actually says the word guarantee. Love parsley, by the way. Well, good, because we got something right here. And uh, it's probably more than I need, but um, I'll be back with the rest of that story in a second here. Anywho, we were in D.C., uh, we land, uh, except when we land, uh, we were there early, so there, uh, there wasn't a gate for us. And then we sat on the tarmac for a little bit, and then when they found a gate for us, the door wouldn't open. So they had to move us to a different gate. And then we were a little late, and so everyone took off like a shot down to the other plane. Now the plane going from D.C. to Columbus was a small plane. Uh, so half of the people who would be on the small plane were on our big plane that came from San Juan. And so all of us run and all of us are greeted at the gate with a, mm, sorry buddy, you can't go, we've closed the door, sorry, the plane needs to go, bye, you're stuck here, goodbye. And so we all make off like nuts to try to like book other flights or see what we can do. But at this point there's like bad weather and snow everywhere and so things are getting delayed all over creation. And uh, so I'm in line, the husband's talking to the pilot, saying, hey, you promised, and the guy starts screaming at, at my husband, which is like, and the other guy, and it was, it was nuts. So, you know, we're going, so we're, we're saying, oh my God, every flight's gonna be full, we're gonna be stuck sleeping in this airport for two or three days, trying to get a flight, just to get back home. And we're not, this isn't even where we went. 
we were going from some place from San Juan to, to Columbus who had no snow, stuck in one place that had snow. And I said, well, let's just get our bags and just get the hell out of here. And so what do we do? Let's just rent a car. We'll rent a car and we'll drive across the Appalachians from Washington, D.C. all the way to Columbus, Ohio. We'll get there faster than if we will just sit here in an airport and wait three days. So we wait for like two hours for, um, uh, for a bag to come out. Two hours we sit there just waiting for our bag to come out. And now it's getting later and later and later and it's like getting dark. I mean, it's like almost midnight at this point. And we finally get our bag, and then we get the bag, and then we go to the baggage, uh, to the uh, rental car thing. And we get to the rental car, and you get the rental car van, and in the van, and then there's like another family in the van, and then they're ahead of us. So in the line, they're ahead of us, and we're behind them, and then in front of the gate, you know, there's two people helping two customers. And the two customers are each really, really pissed at the two agents. So they're yelling and screaming, yelling and screaming, yelling and screaming. And then we're just waiting. So then person number one over here is, you know, agent number one is finally like done. I'm done with you. I'll get my manager to help you. So the manager pops out and says, I'll help you. Just come this way, ma'am. And says, and it's miss, not ma'am. And I'm like, oh, great. Now we're doing that. So she goes off and then the family ahead of us goes to that person. And now they're yelling and screaming over something over there. So we're stuck for another solid hour waiting there until we get seen and we get a car and then we drive across the snowy Appalachians, you know, like this way and that way through to get to Ohio, you know, just before sunrise. Uh, and so it was like 24 hours awake and I started the morning at San Juan and I finished the day like driving through the snow across the Appalachians. <sighs> and that's why I'm freaked out over a hurricane. So, uh, let's see how these are doing, shall we? Are they tender enough? Let us find out. Ooh, yes they are. Good. So we need to drain those suckers. Ah. Okay. Do not burn your hands. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not moving you for this excitement, but I will point you in my general direction. Ah. Okay. So now we have drained Yes, that was a really crappy situation. And it was, and that was like what, like the, that was like the worst or the second worst of the travel, travel delay experiences. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was kind of the worst. But the weird part is once I was in the car, even though the husband was like falling asleep and I'm just driving, I was just happy. I was happy, I was on my way home. And the whole time I kept thinking, this is nice, it might be like, four in the morning, and I might be driving through the blinding snow, but I've got my music, I've got leg room, there's no children screaming, and in a few hours I'm gonna be home, and I can know that I'm gonna be home. So I am at peace. So as it got worse, I felt better, which was kind of zen. Okay, eggs. We got two eggs in a bowl, and our last two eggs at that. Uh, riddle me this, how do I properly finally learn to crack an egg that I don't get shells. I've tried everything. I've tried with a spoon. I've tried with this. Nothing ever seems to work. And neither did that. Uh, oh, someone said that the, uh, the shells are kind of magnetic. Just a smidge left here. Ooh. Okay. And egg parts. <laughs> what kind of rice? This is basmati. You can eat cooked pasteurized eggs if that's what you're asking. I think I already told you about my... I I'm an adventurous eater, but there are some places that I draw the line. And uh, what was it? The... Um, 
balut eggs. That's that's my absolute firm line. <clears throat> I saw those in the in the world market when I went a couple weeks ago. I'm loving brown rice now. Yeah, uh, I mean I know it's better for you, so I can't complain. Um, but honestly, flavor wise, just not my favorite. Not my favorite. Uh, I tried it. I, I know you need, you need to have more water, and there's a the whole technical reason why. I cheat on rice. One cup of rice, two cups of water, microwave, 25 minutes. Yep. The rice cooker works really well for that, too. Uh, same deal here. And uh, also, the, uh, the this part, that part, uh, matters on the kind of rice um, that you're using. Another thing that I've learned. It has to do with the um, evaporation of the water as it cooks, not so much with the, uh, the amount of water. <clears throat> I mean, it seems that, you know, for some rice, types of rice, you need more water, but it's because they're thicker, and since it's thicker, it takes longer to cook, and the longer it takes to cook, the more water will evaporate while it cooks, which is why some kinds of rice need more water even though they absorb the same amount of water. If that makes any kind of sense. Yeah, and before, yeah. You, yeah, hold on, back up. You can eat cooked eggs if you law you like. If you are eating raw, you should just pasteurize, all I'm suggesting, yes. Uh, and before I put, ah! And be back up, and before I put the water in, I can't cook to save my life. S same here, that was a deal. 30 years, I did not cook at all. I used to have a rice cooker. I did not cook at all, at all. I burned water, literally. <clears throat> um, I just decided to get off my butt after my long and winding story. I decided to just get off my butt and cook. Um, just found a recipe to Afghanistan and cooked. And then that started this whole thing. So if I can do it, anybody can. I was like the ultimate. I mean, my whole Top Chef blog was about, I can't cook. I physically, nothing could possibly get me to cook. There's no way I can, I can't, I'm the worst, I'll kill everything. And I managed, so, I can't cook. Not, just not rice, haha, <laughs> lol. Yeah, um, rice is easy. I learned how to cook from Gordon Ramsay video. Yeah, just, um, what that, what the, the whole thing that snowballed, into getting me off my ass was when I sat next to the super chef and I was frustrated and I said, mm, I can't cook. And he said, just go to damn YouTube and learn how to roast a chicken. And I just did it. Yeah, see cooking shows, I only watch Top Chef and, they all, and I didn't watch Top Chef because I like cooking. Because I would never, I mean, I couldn't be in a room with the Food Channel. I mean, I just didn't understand how people would watch it, especially while working out. That struck me so strange. And I still don't watch the Food Network. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just not my thing. Um, but Top Chef, I watched because I followed like Bravo and Project Runway and all that. But that was my limit. But I'm like a Top Chef obsessed though. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have gotten into meeting the guy which got me to the guy which got me to the guy that told me to start cooking. So, <clears throat> I am going to try something. Just because. Just because. Um, just because I have some stuff, Gordon Ramsay, yeah, um, I'm sure he does, uh, I mean, I just find him off-putting, Gordon Ramsay. Um, the yelling, the yelling and the angry, he does not, you know, I don't, I don't groove on it, so, um, I don't, I don't gravitate towards him. Uh, so, any of those shows on his, uh, I know other people like it, and that's okay, it's just not really my thing. Um... I uh, have a tomato, and spring onions, and a little bit of lettuce that I cooked, that I bought when I thought I was gonna make that avocado, uh, that octopus salad. Damn it, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, 
uh, wash tomato. Uh, it's all in that. It's actually quite mellow. See, that's, yeah, I know, but that kind of bugs me more. But I don't watch them anymore, though. Um, yeah, when there are, there are people in the world that are, you know, a certain personality for, you know, TV, and that kind of irks me. I'm not doing a recipe here for a thing, uh, but I don't watch them. Uh, thank you for the follow, Joe. Um, and, uh, so let's, um, I'm not doing a recipe here. I'm just, uh, chopping up a tomato. Uh, so it doesn't go bad, uh, and I can have a sort of salad, um, to sort of eat, uh, on the side, because otherwise it's just gonna go bad. I don't have, I don't even know if we have salad dressing, to be honest with you. I, I don't, I don't have a clue. That's how often we eat regular salads around here. That is too big. I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just, uh, I'm randomly chopping up tomato here. Are you lost? Yeah, I am lost. I'm just, uh, I figure I, I need to use up this tomato that we have sitting here and some of the lettuce. And I just want something on the side. And uh, I don't want it to go to waste. I don't have a whole lot of time. Do we have salad dressing? Ah, uh, that's salad dressing, and this is salad dressing also. Fine, now we have salad dressing. Yay! Uh, I'm gonna chop up a couple spring onions and throw them in. And some lettuce, and we're just gonna call that a day. These awful big spring onions, look at that. I mean, I it's like thicker than the usual scallions that I would find. You know, one is probably gonna be enough just for the two of us. Hello, husband! <laughs> what? Somebody says hello, husband. Uh, let me wash this off. Alright. Okay. Uh, back to my regular knife over here. Uh, I need to throw something away. Here? Done. Oh, and this. Coming at you. Okay. Think fast. Okay. Are you going to need these again? Uh, no. This is the world's most random salad. This is the use it, use it before you lose it salad. And a couple times, like, uh, I think it was like when I was cooking the Bahamas, they'd say, oh yeah, it's just serve it with some salad on the side, and I'd say lettuce and tomato, and I said, well, I can't, like, make that. That's, like, not a recipe. Do you need this fork still? Uh, yeah, save the fork. So, toss you in there. Toss in some lettuce. Just use olive oil, yes. That's a, that's a monster, yes. Um, it is a giant from Guatemala. What, Guatemala. Just use olive oil, yes. Send me some Tim's Tamses. I wonder if I could survive the pose. Uh, anyway, okay, and uh, so I got scallions in here. We have the remains of some lettuce here. Um, I don't feel like chopping up any more parsley. And this lettuce is starting to wilt. Um, this is just as random as random gets. And this just because I have time, he said, as he's running out of time. Is there time in the salad, too? Nah, we do have time. So there are two forks sitting here in the sink. Well, uh, I need one for tasting. This is garbage. And this is garbage, too. Okay. Oh, I didn't use that for anything. Okay. Salt and pepper, olive oil, and call it a day on that. doesn't get any more random. Tim Tams are chocolate biscuits in Australia. Oh my! 
Now, you mean biscuits like like Americans mean biscuits, or you mean biscuits like British mean biscuits, like uh, like cookies? I think you mean cookies. Olive oil. Olive oil's a better idea. Yeah. Then, um, salad dressing. Salad dressing. Okay. The the random the random salad. The suggestion of salad. Mm. The appearance of salad. With just a hint of salad. Okay. Just so I can have something to eat. Boom. Okay. okay. Yeah, Meanwhile, um, skillet time. I think we've decided to brave the Mondo red palm oil. Yeah, like cookies. Only two fifty a pack here. Goodness gracious. Okay. Skillet. Uh, let me get the skillet warm first. I'm putting this aside. Okay, here comes the part I've been scared about. They put some almonds in. Goodness, that sounds good. Okay. Scared. I'm scared, mommy. I need to wash this first. Here comes or pine nuts. Oh, in there. Pine nut. I got them. Use them if you got them. Right? They're not toasted. I don't have time to toast them. But now, my pine nuts. You want pine nuts? You shall have. <clears throat> If you if you knew how this whole thing started, if you looked at the blog from the beginning in Afghanistan, you would see how the idea of me just randomly putting stuff together uh, is like the furthest thing that I possibly could have imagined. I mean, my brain couldn't handle that. My brain can br hardly handle this. Here's the part. Ah, <sighs> brush flat cakes with egg mixture. Make flat cakes. Uh, here goes. I'm gonna take just a picture of this in my hand. It requires speed and skill. Okay. This is as good as the picture is gonna get. Uh, Cause I'm not gonna grab that again. Organism. Flat cake. Flat cake. Flat cake. Brushing. Well. This is gonna get all over the paper anyway, so. Other side. One. <clears throat> uh, organism. I said you know what, I'm, I cannot buy those anymore. I said you know what, I cannot buy those anymore, okay? <clears throat> My hands are all up in this, all up in this. <clears throat> That's why I wash my hands like every 10 seconds around here. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Allergies really suck too. Okay. Ooh. Surprise! <clears throat> Surprise emoji. <clears throat> you know the a new iOS, the new the, the the newer newer iOS, the one that the beta that's not out yet. They've uh, they're including the new emoji that they didn't have before. So we'll have a unicorn and middle finger, and I think that's the one that's gonna bring us the dancing man to go with the dancing lady. So we'll have more choices of emoji. 
I got some other emoji, but they're um, the, the basic of their gifts, so you can really they can only cut and paste them. They don't work in this thing. I do the same with my hands. It may be becoming OCD. <laughs> when um, I don't I don't know if I'm just imagining this, but I seem to recall that the very first season of Happy Days, uh, the um, Howard Cunningham, the dad. Um, one of the, the, the character, one of the characteristics of, you know, one of his quirks was he'd always, always go off and wash his hands, and that was supposed to be a funny thing. And I thought, oh, that would be funny, someone always going out and wash their hands all the time is. I did not practice good hygiene as a child. I thought that was very funny. Now, that's me. I am prepared, I mean, I would go to happy hour. When I was in Columbus, I'd go to happy hour. I mean, I'd go and I'd wash my hands, I'd go there, and then I'd pray that people wouldn't introduce me because I have to shake hands. And then I'd say, hey, David Dorian, how you doing? And, uh, and I would, uh, then they shake my hand. I'm like, oh, great, hi. And then I'd go and wash my hands again. They come back, oh, I'd like you to meet. And then they wash their hands, shake hands. And, and like the bartender who would shake hands with everybody, he'd like want to shake my hand. I'm like, no, fist bump. I'll fist bump you. How's that? And, so, and he looked at me like I was some like I was Howie Mandel or something. And I was thinking, I'm sorry. I just you've shaken hands with every last person in here, and I've seen the grossness that other people are. I don't need that. So that's my OCD. Did any of us as kids? Yeah, I, I a probably not, and b I feel that my my bad habits lasted way longer than they should have to the point that I'm just mortified mortified when I think about the past okay so <clears throat> speaking of which uh, well I was a dirt bag as a kid <laughs> yeah Well, I think that went hand in hand with my whole thing of not learning to cook. Um, and, you know, being a teenager in rebellion and da 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 Um, so, that's, that's, uh, thankfully I grew out of it. Late, but I grew out of it. Okay, here goes nothing. Um, so, well, I gotta take a picture. So weird. My kid sniffs things. <laughs> okay. And, uh, let me put this away. Okay, one more time, once more into the bleach. Uh, we're gonna coat these. Oh, wait a minute, you know, this is about the time that I need to go back there. This is hot. And, oh my god, this is gonna be a cardiovascular delight, I tell you. I have Soma here. You can come watch. I'll bring you along. This is the scary part. The other scary part. Every part is scary to me. I'm sorry, I've got allergies. Speaking of sniffing. The, I have the giant vat of this, so I figure I might as well make use of it. I don't know, God, it would just seem so strange to use that, that much. You know what this looks like. It looks like so gross, but it smells really... I don't want to say strong, but it has a very distinct aroma, which, if you're not used to it, um, is a little off-putting. I cannot use a whole, that whole, I can't. I can't bring myself to. So weird. Yeah, uh, what are the, this is red palm oil. Um, it is uh, kind of the thing in West Africa. Um, it is... Uh, not environmentally friendly. Um, you can look that up. Uh, there are some places, though, that are trying to do envir grown environmentally friendly red palm oil, but red palm oil. It's from the palm. No, not tomato. Red palm oil. Screenshot. Um, again, uh, some people, there was a point uh, in the not too distant past that people were selling it as kind of superfood thing, which is always bullshit. Um, <clears throat> it's also very high in saturated fat. So um, there's that. So it's a sometimes food. Uh, but it's the way it's 
grown is not good for the earth. Um, J.R. Pazer, thank you for the like and restream. So I try not to use too much of it for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> if I find, you know, if I find a place, a brand somewhere that has the eco-friendly red palm oil, I'll do that. <clears throat> Next. Trader Joe's. <clears throat> yeah, Trader Joe's used to have red palm oil, then they didn't. And now they do again, so maybe they're the ones that have the uh, environmentally friendly red palm oil. Ah! So, uh, I am not doing the whole red palm oil, because I just can't. I can't bring myself to do that. Um, But it's very red. It smells like uh, my kid has good quirks. Um, uh, Yolanda, thank you for the restream. Um, it's now it smells like red palm oil to me. Um, but when I hadn't ever experienced it before, um, I thought it smelled like very clean, fresh dirt, uh, like from you know a garden. Like oh, I really want to garden with this stuff. Um, I'm mixing this with with canola because I can't I can't bring myself to use that much I can and, and and there was some recipe somewhere that I saw where they um they did half and half so I'm gonna allow myself that it isn't like I just invented this idea even though it feels like I did um okay so that's in there uh, I need to take a picture of that because that is very red <clears throat> And I gotta prepare myself. Uh, preheat oven to 180 to keep it warm. <sighs> okay, messy time. We are going to dip these and these and then that goes in there and then they go in something else. <clears throat> towels, which will go on that plate. <clears throat> so we've got some uh, Sierra Leone reggae action here going. <clears throat> Such an interesting country. Cliff, is that blood? No, it's red palm oil. It just looks like blood. Um, oh, no, it just looks like blood. Uh, spatula or tongs. Let's do both. Just to be on the safe side, where's the big old spatula? Where's, where's Gigantor? Gigantor! Look at that. It's a big spatula. It's the oil. Is that the iPad Pro? No, it is the, uh, this is the, the Spatula Pro. No, that's an iPad Air 2. Um, the iPad Air, iPad Pro, I haven't seen it yet, um, I don't think it's out yet, but it's, it's, it's huge, it's, it's huge, it's the most elegant, fabulous, marvelous pad, it's huge. I can't do a Donald Trump impression. Uh, okay, we're dipping that. Coating, 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 coating in the breadcrumbs. Uh... I'm going to take a picture of that before I drop it into the, into the stuff. I hate taking pictures with the iPad, but since I'm using the phone, the phone is, as I say, ocupado. Oh my god, does anybody remember, um, Mark Russell? The singer, comedian, Mark Russell? Uh, he's been made fun of very much. Uh, Rocky Johnson, thank you for the like. Uh, do you think people... Uh, we'll ever do a mirror up here in SoFa. Uh, well, want to organize it? Pick a date. Trump, 20... Two, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good date. That's a good date. To a 20 million. That's, that's a good date for it. Um, when man is still... If, was it in the year 2525? If man is still alive. No, but Mark Russell. Um, he had a... He wasn't very funny to me. Um, but... Um, uh, but he had this one little ditty about the bathroom, uh, the the airport, the uh, airplane bathroom. It says, the sign said Ocupado, the sign said Ocupado, and so were we. It, it was just very stupid, but for some reason it stuck in my head. 
Okay, I'm afraid to drop it in by hand. Okay, how about like that? Delicately. It looks like it's bigger on stream. Uh, you mean, I'm assuming you mean the iPad since that's what you're asking. Um, yeah. Everything, size is relative. Okay. And, uh, allegedly I could do four in a pan. Allegedly. So we're gonna try to do four. And then we'll have three and then we'll be ready. And then it'll be time to eat. Amazingly. It's huge. It's huge. It's, it's the classiest. It's the classiest, most elegant corned beef yam patty. Okay, it said flip it once. Question is, I don't know when. I, some, something golden brown action. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. So I'm supposed to be. I can't sing that so um, I'm wearing a song. Especially not when I'm hearing something else in my ear. Do it like it's supposed to be. Huh. Okay, let me double check what, uh, what I wrote. Waiting on that on the gold, golden brown. Yell if you see something change. You can't have leftovers either, which is... I think we're gonna have leftovers. Which is why I won't be cooking on Sunday. Because I won't have time. I'll be busy eating these leftovers. See, that's so thick, I'm just wondering about it getting cooked on the inside. I need to start a Kickstarter for, like, kitchen gadgets here. A GoFundMe. I just, like, plug my GoFundMe on my cooking screen. Help me buy gadgets. Help me buy decent places to store my knives. Because it's sad the way I throw my knives. It, like, it, it would make anyone who likes knives weep. I'm almost... You sh shouldn't actually be able to see it back there. Okay, here goes. You take your wula and you flip it. I had this... Um, I learned uh, what the division from a math teacher in, in junior high or whatever. Um... He's teaching us the long division, and but he had this funny accent. So he says, "You take your fraction, and you flip, and you flip it. And you take your ruler, and you, and you flip it. And you destroy your yam cake. I can't get my hands around it. Problem. Okay, let's try a third implement now. How about you?" Will you work better? Leverage. Come on, don't fall apart, just flip. Do not fall apart, you're falling apart. That's not what you're supposed to do. Shenanigans. Sizzle, that looks so good, thank you. Take care, Cliff. I'll check out the blog to see the final product. Thank you, Martina, I appreciate you coming by and I appreciate all your help. said flip once. So that's that's a, what we're doing. I'm doing pretty decent on time. Oh, God dang it, how do you get your hands around it? I don't know how to get out of the damn pan, too. Ah, fork? Uh, no, because they'll fall apart. They're not, they're not that solid. But um, that's not the worst idea. Well, the non-stick metal on the non-stick is not a great idea. Um, 
cut a rubber fork. Yeah, I already used metal on this thing once. I used these metal tongs on there. Yakata, not a great idea. Got a nick in it. I don't know how long it needs to be in there. But it's really a matter of getting to the middle of it, but it's cooked, it's, the meat is edible. The only thing that like, needs to be cooked is the uh, egg part, which is about the outside. The, uh, uh, DM Burroughs, thank you for the follow. Use a fork just to get under. Okay, well, if you get enough votes, anything can happen. Okay, implement number four. Okay, well, I'm gonna take them out and drain them now. Fall apart bad, boo. Ugly. Okay. Not good. Hold it. That's better. Just the edges, yeah. Okay, we got one one failure over there. Which will not go on the plate. Two. That's better. Three, use as leverage. Irk, yes. That one did not come out too well. <clears throat> uh, next, that goes into the oven to stay warm. Just got preheated. Yay! Okay, here we go with numbers. The last three. Five, six, and seven. <clears throat> it's really odd. Uh, was that deli corn beef not enough egg if falling apart? Yeah. It would appear that way. It would appear that way. Delicately dropping. Um, yeah, did not use. I did not use nearly as much of the egg as as I had prepared. Ahem. And I have way more breadcrumbs than uh, than I thought I'd need, which makes me wonder if maybe they weren't too. They didn't give me an idea of size. I always have a problem with size. Was that deli corn beef you asked? Yes, Perico, that was Michelangelo. That was deli corn beef. Um, traditionally is done with canned corned beef, um, which is interesting, uh, but the, uh, the last person who republished this uh, traditional recipe said, listen, I want to use deli corned beef. Uh, it just so happened the author, uh, the preparer, uh, the blogger, uh, had a, a, a relative in the, uh, in the deli. So it, uh, uh, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but she said they were falling apart if you try to dip them in the egg. Um, so she suggested brushing them with the egg um, because they would fall apart. So that's two votes for falling apart. <clears throat> so now I've got those in there. Uh, yes, should bind. Yep, 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 yep. Live and loin. I just didn't know how much to brush. I was like, do I need to use the whole thing? You know, I probably should have poured it over the top now that I think about it. Instead of brushing, I could have poured it on top. Instead of dipping, that would have used more of the egg. But now I know, alas, for next time. Well, I'm not gonna need this anymore. So let me wash that off. Goodbye. So, um, he's not watching, I am a thousand percent sure. Um, but there was a gentleman who was on Was Cooking Serbia a few weeks ago, more egg needed in mixture, no on cake. 
More egg needed in mixture, no on cake. Okay. Um, I think I'm getting what you're trying to impart. Um, but anyway, he was Serbian and he was kind of giving me a hard time on the whole Serbian thing. Food. I mean, like, even on a, if it was deli, then it was already cooked. Yes. Yes, yes it was. So that's why I felt okay tasting it earlier. In case you're wondering. <clears throat> but I could have used more egg in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the thing itself, too, now that I think about it. Where are we? <laughs> Not that I needed to wash those off. Even canned corned beef is pre-cooked, yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, you know what I need to do? I need to get me an oven ball. I have a nasty habit of reaching in the oven to get stuff and then going, ah! Okay, let's try flipping the sucker. Okay, we're gonna try this. You know, the oil isn't that hot. Now that I think about it. But that's not splattering either. But it's sizzling. No te... Ay, caray. Condonado. ¿Qué está ahí? Ahem. Trying to use this as an anchor. It's not really working. Better. Yeah, when I made, um, fish bowls for Finland, boy, because I, I have no concept of size, you know? I mean, if I, I need to take a ruler. That's why I have the, the, the OCD kind of uh, thing I wasn't using, the uh, cutting board. Because I don't have an idea of size. And when I had to make fish bowls, they were too big and they were raw in the middle. And this said flat and I don't know how flat and didn't know how many. But again, they were cooked on the inside. I and mean, they're cooked as deli meat, so as you're saying. I'm not running the risk of like, hey, this is raw food, but I want it more cooked. You know what I can do? Duh. I can taste that one that didn't come out well. <clears throat> I need to take them out anyway. <clears throat> that would be smart, wouldn't it? Tasting the food. Did you taste your food? That's quite tasty. I put only use the egg in the mixture and not milk. Yeah. That's quite tasty. It doesn't need salt, but I can understand why people would put, like, you know, hot chili stuff on there. It would make it hotter still. In fact, that reminds me, I took that out. I can find it. You can use it so little, it's like the thing in the very, very back of the cabinet. Wow, it is really back in there. Yeah. I'm digging for gold. Oh my god, it's the very last thing. We got tapatio, salsa picante, and we have Tabasco. Let's go a little hog with the Tabasco, shall we? I do not have Piri Piri. Piri Piri peppers. I mean, I know I could probably find Piri Piri sauce. But peri peri peppers are like the my great white whale. I cannot find it. People tell me when I, you know to go to New York, I can you know they'll bring me back some or something. Ah, that tasted very good. And now I say they're done. You good baby. That's good baby. 
Mine come to Papa. And get them off of there. There we go. Now I figured out how to get out. Andrew Was, thank you for the restream. Okay, <clears throat> off the heat. Got our Tabasco. Damn allergies, can drive me nuts. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. So we got our rice is ready also. So I can turn off the stove. It's time to plate and not burn my arm. Okay, how am I going to plate this? That is the question. He likes putting like everything on one plate, but I don't like putting hot and cold things together. Not that that's cold anymore, but <clears throat> I should put it in the fridge. In this case, you know what I'm gonna do vis-a-vis -vis the rice? what I'm gonna do. I have not done this in a while. I mean, it's the, the simplest thing in the universe. There's no magic to it. It's just when I was a kid, I'd see this happen. I'd go like, oh, how does it happen? It's like, oh, duh. Uh, la lavender, lavender femchi. Thank you for liking the restream. Hot mix salad limp, indeed, indeed. See, you tell that, you tell that to, to, to my husband. Salad. Okay, this. Und. In that. And then. Ahem. Hold on. Stray. We'll get back to you in a moment. Abracadabra. Little mounds of rice. <clears throat> hot. Do not touch hot with bare hands. Do not touch hot with bare hands. That's a bad idea. Leftovers make very that can make very little rice that way. <clears throat> have less leftovers. Your husband is so lucky to have a wonderful food made. Thank you, thank you so much. It's it's the least I could do, uh, you know. What? You have to put up with cooking every single every single meal we ate at home, preparing every single meal for twenty three years. No, twenty. 20, 20, 20, 21 years before I lifted a finger. So it's the least I could do. Um, okay, hold on. I forgot, I forgot I had to do the upside down trick. Okay. I got loose kernels, loose kernels. Okay. <clears throat> One more time. Yum, 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 yum. Dance to what a feeling when we're dancing on the ceiling. Okay. Still on? Uh, yes, I am still on. But I am nearly done. Who does the dishes? Um, he tends to run and, and, and try to get some done while uh, I'm doing this. Uh, but then we kind of team up to clean up afterwards. Uh, I'm usually wiping everything down. Uh, okay, here's the part where... Ah, kick, kick, kick. Shoot. And, and mopping the floor. Lol, you just started cooking. Please tell the story. Uh, oh, I would, except I'm near done. But come next time um, when I'm prepping, and I will happily um, give you the epic saga from, from Jump. Because uh, it, is, it is an epic story. And I'll happily do it. Uh, but uh, it's uh, the, I need to eat first. So... 
follow the uh, subscribe, um, and then um, near the beginning is usually when it's uh, story time with Cliffy, because I'm chopping onions and it's very boring, and so I just you know I just wind up telling stories, which is my thing. Ah! I can pretend that didn't fall apart. Team up to clean up. Yes. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Okay, we're not gonna put the ugly one down. Ah, don't fall apart. No, don't fall apart. I don't want you to fall apart. You must stay together. For the kids. Okay. There. Hot. Bye. Did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that one stood together. He's gonna say that's too much food. I just know it. But I'll have a third one. I went running. I did not sit on my butt today. So, and those two yucky ones will be left over. I might write that on my whiteboard. <laughs> yes, well, that was off camera. Behind, behind the magic. Um, I don't want to put that on the same plate. I don't, I don't. Um, and I don't want to put a jar of hot sauce if I'm not going to use that much of it. Especially Tabasco, you only use a couple drops. So, um, let's say... You are our picture subject. I'll get my iPad for you. Okay. And I don't need to take a picture of the salad. Um, and, uh, but I do need to put them in bowls though. Do I have? Yes. The, the, the rando salad. The salad ish. The salad like substance. Just to have something. Off the recipe, as they say. Okay, here we go. Um, could you pause that for a second? Okay, so we have our dish one of two. Uh, for Sierra Leone, which is our sweet potato and corned beef cakes uh, with side of rice. And uh, here's the other one. And our little random salad that I just tossed together just for giggles. Um, so that is night one of two with my little halo. Uh, that's night one of two for Sierra Leone. Night two will be on Tuesday. So you gotta wait all the way till Tuesday uh, for night two. I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna be, but I gotta make it interesting. I'm thinking it's gonna be uh, it's a stewish kind of thing, uh, beef stewish kind of thing, but with an odd puree action. So thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, Yolanda, you're the greatest. Thank you, Jonesy, thank you, uh, Perico. Uh, all of you, thank you so much for coming by. Um, like, restream, follow on uh, cliffyland.com, see the blog on Friday, uh, see how everything went, pictures, links to the original recipes, etc., etc., etc. So, um, uh, anything on rice? No, we're just gonna um, have the, the, the hot sauce. So, it's gonna be plain. Um, Thank you. So, uh, catch you next time. Till then, ta-ta and bon appetit. <laughs>